Let's get over to my man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at odd-oracle.com. That's odd-oracle.com. Tim Wood, what's going on? Well, I sent you over some charts. Uh, we can cover the S&Ps first, or we can look at the, the gold issues. Whatever you want to uh, do. we got a market, that's for sure. Where yeah, you, all yeah. right. Well, let's start with the S or uh, let's start with the goal. I guess chart number one. Okay. So, and this is kind of a repeat. This looks at the bigger picture. I know. Uh, yeah. GDX, GDX is off. It's probably the market. You know, S and P's are off. So it's probably affect nature. But anyhow, in a nutshell, uh, this is the uh, uh, daily bullish percent index for the gold miners index slash GDX. So it's a ratio. Yes. In the top window is the uh, uh, 28 period RSI for this ratio. So when it falls below uh, 30, then closes above 30, usually the bottom's in. And all those blue lines going back to, uh, it looks like about mid-2016, shows the times when that condition happened. And there was uh, just one failure back in 2016. All of them, uh, you know, came near... Uh, near or at uh, major lows. Yes. And usually the, the signal's in. You have to go below 30, then you have to close above 30. When you do that, okay. that suggests the bo the bottom's in. So this happened probably, uh, you know, a good month ago. I didn't yeah. you know. It was probably yes. September. Uh, well, this is September, maybe August. That signal was generated. Okay. And the market has worked higher here, so I'm thinking... Um, Using markets, especially the gold markets, it really has to have a washout move to the downside. They have to get everybody on one side of the fence. Right. And, and if you don't get everybody on one side of the fence, it's usually not a bottom. And this indicator helps to figure out if we all got on one side of the fence. Yes. So you want to get on the other side of the fence. So I'm thinking the bottom's in on the uh, uh, GDX. So here's, here's an, uh, let's go to chart two. Okay. And uh, this chart goes back to 1984. And the middle chart is the uh, monthly XAU gold ratio. And so, um, and what I, I did, I, I did some other stuff, but it seems what works best is the slow stochastics of that ratio. And so when this ratio is plummeting, uh, then... The slow stochastic, slow stochastic gets at a very low level, but when the, this ratio is plumbing, that means gold stocks are are going a lot down, a lot faster than gold is. Okay. So uh, usually, when the, this ratio is going down, it's actually a bearish sign. But when it goes down too fast, it's a bullish sign. And so when the uh, slow stochastic gets down around minus ten and turns up, you're usually looking at a major low, and all those blue lines across the chart are times when that happened. Okay, you know it came at the 2000 low. It came at the uh, uh, there's a minor low in 2012. Came at the 2016 low. Uh, came again in in um, can't quite read that, but it looks like about uh, 2018, and then again it came in uh, two you know. Currently, actually, it came in in October 2022, the last time we had that, and that that was last year. So that picked out a major low. So and these signals are multi-years. And if you look at most of them, you know, uh, these are big time frames because you're looking at a, a monthly chart. Right. So, um, so, I'm, so I'm thinking on a bigger time frame, I'm thinking something big is going on here. Uh, the XAU ratio really hasn't, you know, if you look at the middle chart, it really hasn't performed well to the upside. It just kept uh, going down hard and bouncing up and going down hard, and it's done it last three times, going back to uh, look like about, what, 2020 or something. So so I'm thinking this ratio on the bigger time frames, it just really sold out. Um, but anyhow, that, that's another major signal. It gave a signal back last October. In my opinion, that's the signal still in force. It goes out of force when the when the slow stochastic gets above uh, uh, plus ninety, and the, and those are the red lines across the chart. I see. Okay. So I'm thinking, 
Yeah, so I'm thinking that's probably where we're going to go. We go down to plus, minus, you know, uh, plus 10 to plus 90. So I'm thinking we got got uh, quite a ways to go here. Uh, so um, we can go to the last chart. we got time. Oh, yeah. we get, uh, So hold it. We were only on the second chart. Do you want me to... Um Go to, well, unless you got qu questions here, we can we can. No, 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 no. Uh, you want me to skip the third chart? Is is actually the short term chart of okay, GDX. Okay, so then I have the last chart. Well, the last chart's the tick 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 and. Uh, hold on. You want the third chart, right? I got the third chart. Yeah, third yeah. chart. Yeah, yeah third good. chart rather. Yeah. Okay, so, I have it. Yep. Okay. Well, anyhow, this chart is just a short term chart. So, so the the major two charts. Of the previous ones are looking at the great big time frames. Yep. And and this chart, all right. I hear the music. That's cool. Just stay right there. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. We're, gonna be, we're talking uh, gold first. We're going to go from gold into the S and P 500, which is uh, trading down 65 points right now. Stay right there, Tim and I. Come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim and Tom O'Brien, we do appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials right now trading down 323. NASDAQ is off 215. S&Ps are down 67. We have gold down 26. And we are talking uh, right now uh, the GDX. Okay, Tim. Right. Yeah, okay, GDX. Uh, yeah, go to the third chart. Yeah. And this is just a short-term chart. Uh, the bottom window is the 18-day average of the up-down volume. Next higher window is the uh, GDX advanced decline 18-day uh, average. And um, so, anyhow, anything above the, the the blue areas when both indicators are above minus 10, and the uh, pink areas are when both indicators are below minus 10. Yes. And even though the market soft couple, you know. Over two percent, two and a half percent right now. This indicator is still above. We're still in the blue area, so I'm thinking it's just just noise. But that's interesting. If you huh? look here, yeah, yeah. So, so it's it's it is what it is. You know, actually, if you go back and look at the, you know, the uh, May high, I thought that was pretty good. You know, the both charts caught most of that rally up. Then the uh, GDX made a double top there, right? And both indicators went right below minus ten, right? Uh, so, and now we're making a double top. You know, last week or even this week, we tested the previous high we had in uh, end of August, and both indicators made higher highs. So that's a bullish divergence. So yes. I don't think this is a, a, a top of any consequence. And if you kind of look at the volume charts there compared to the previous highs. You know, it looks like we broke the previous highs in higher volume. So you you can have pullbacks, but it's probably going to be short lived, in my opinion. We'll start. We'll, we'll break above last week's highs and and uh, just keep kind of staggering higher here. So, in my opinion, you know, the whole thing looks actually pretty good. So nice. I'm not saying tomorrow is going to be an update. Oh but no, I get it. In general, I get it. This market's going to work higher. I get it. Okay, so let's talk this S and P. There we All go. Right, S and P's. Uh, chart okay. Chart number four. This yes. Chart goes back a long time, back to mid 2014, and the uh, bottom window is the uh, 21 day average of the CBOE uh, uh, equity put call ratio reading, and the next higher window is the uh, five day equity put call ratio reading, and uh, intermediate term lows form. When when uh, the bottom one, which is a 21 day, gets above uh, about 75, and on the five day it gets above uh, 80, and right now, or well, at least last couple of days, both of them are above their bullish readings. Uh, so we're pounding out an intermediate term low, and in where, where exactly is it? Uh, you know, I, I think we're probably days away. You know, I thought well, Oct October we could probably see a retest. I'm not sure how October is going to work out, but on a, on a intermediate term basis, probably you could buy here. And even though you could see some short term pain, maybe over the next, you know, several days, this is probably a, a not too far away from a intermediate term low forming in this range. Uh, so, hey, but, you know, that's the sentiment indicator. Yep. It doesn't say anything about. 
support and a resistance, it tells you what the uh, equity put call ratio readings are right now. Right. Uh, they're basically both in bullish territory. Okay. Now you flip to chart five. Yes. Okay, chart five, bottoms always form on panic. If you right. don't have panic, you don't have a bottom. The top window is the 10-day uh, average of the trend. And the last, you know, the shaded areas, I noted that when the 10-day trend it gets above 1.2, that's when panic in the markets occur. And that's where all those pink areas are are right. defined, and, and so we've been uh, actually we picked out that low on your radio in show. May, we, yep. we kept saying yes. it went sideways for about you know eleven months, and finally did break out, and and now we've gone up. Now we need the ten day trend to get back above one point two before you can expect the next low to form. Well, as of yesterday's close, we're one point oh five. That's not high enough yet. Uh, to indicate a bottom forming, you know, if you look over the last actually three days of trend, you got a trend yesterday at one point two seven, day before one point one six, and day before that one point six one. So over the last three days, not counting today, you're getting the trends up around one point two. So you need a ten day trend to get up around one point two. Right. So we're going to have some possibly pain over the next couple of weeks to finish that off. But it's probably going to be pretty close to the, in the current time, in the current price range, in my view. I thought we might pull back to one, 420 at one point on the SPYs. I'm thinking, you know, maybe 430 is probably going to be it. But time will tell. But intermediate term wise, we're not quite there yet. I think next week, if we you know, if we bounce, come back down, we may get to that trend of 1.2, and that'd be the time I'd start flipping intermittent term bullish because I think we're going to go into a a year end rally. You know, what's um, amazing, Tim, is that today. I mean, you're down pretty hard today, and yeah. you know, when I was first started the show, you know, the trend right now is at 1.08. When I started the show, the trend was at 1.04. It's like there's zero fear here, man. I mean, it's like. How do, how do you, you know, well, you, you, you're down hard, but yet no one is worried, which is pretty wild, man. Yeah. Well, what what trend reading are you getting it from? Uh, stock charts or? Bloomberg. I got a trend right now. Which From who? Bloomberg. Bloomberg, okay. I got a trend 1.28. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, it, this is uh, what, um, uh, Think or Swim. That's okay, I'm I'll check. I have Think or Swim correct. also. I'll check Think or Swim. But today I have the low, I have a trade in 109 right now, the low of the day of 0. 0.67, the high of 1.14. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, but what, that's all right. I've been because using uh, that, no, the Think cool or Swim as far as the ticks and creams. Well, here. Yeah. Well, actually, let's flip to the last chart just to show you some. No, no, what, and I just want to get this on. straight with the, with the clients, too. So what happens here, folks, is this. Tim has Think or Swim. So if you have Think or Swim, the bottom line, just keep using it because that's what he's done the work on. It, 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 that's correct, That's correct, Tim, right? It's, yeah, that's yeah. why I did my work so, on it. So right. if you have that, folks, do the work on that because I'll, I'll do the same thing because that's what ends up happening with you know some of these feeds anyway. So that's, that's the bottom line. Okay, so I'm, I'm, at yeah. the, I'm at the next chart. All right, chart. So here's where we are right now. And uh, all of that blue section, yep. um, uh, I did this chart earlier, and all of that blue section, you see, uh, I, I, I put uh, in blue the times that trend closed above 1.2 and the ticks closed below minus 200. Yes. And it's all coming in, you know, pretty close to where we are right now, uh, all the way up to about 445. So I'm thinking this is a base building problem. So I'm thinking we're going to bounce probably shortly, you know, probably not this week, but probably next week, then we'll probably come back down again. The only reason why I say that, because we need the trend, the 10 day trend to get up to 1.2 area to, to qualify as a uh, intermediate term bottom. And the bottom window, as of yesterday's close, anyhow, would come in at 1.05. Yeah, just, so just stay right there. Do probably it. not the one to chase. No, I'm with you. Just stay right there, Tim. Uh, Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien, we do appreciate the growling and problem with us out here. We're going to be right back, folks. We're still going to talk the S&P. We have the Dow Industrials down 314, Nasdaq's off 208, S&P's down 64. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tom O'Brien, Tim Wood. We do appreciate your growl and prowl with us out here. You can reach Tim, folks, every trading day. It's a great newsletter at oracle.com. That's oracle.com. And hey, Tim, the reason I haven't been with you is that, man, I got a vicious um, sore throat. And then. Okay. And then. Uh, but yesterday, Bridget and I, we picked up a German Shepherd from Germany. <laughs> so we were on a road oh. trip yesterday, yeah. So Oh, good. It's great to be back. How are you feeling now? Pretty good or better? I, I am. I just can't uh, talk loud. But I feel okay. great compared to what I felt. I didn't feel bad, but you know, like when you get a sore throat, you can't even talk, man. It's crazy, you know? Yeah. So let, let's yeah, talk. I, I talked to... Uh, Jacob yesterday uh, or Tuesday, I guess yes. it was, and it says you're out, and so. So, but, uh, so like right now, Tim, we have the spies at four thirty-two, right? You know, you're teaching us that we know we we need that this trend to get up over the you know at one twenty one point two. So, what are you figuring with the the spy? Do you think this thing is going to get down to the four twenty area or something? Uh, at one time, I, I thought it, it might, because yeah. um, that's pretty much the previous highs down in 420. Right. But it depends where all the panic shows up at. Right. And that's where support you know, comes in. Right. Um, but we have no panic so, today. That's why I'm asking, I guess. You know what I mean? It's like you're down at 65 well, S&P points and, you know, well, well, you know, let me ask you this. Do you think we do have panic today? Because I know that you said we are at 1.2 on the Think of Swim platform. So do you feel like there's some panic today? Right, right. But let's go. Let's go back to uh, chart number six there. Okay, here we go. And I got it. Yep. It, okay, so I listed all those panic uh, tenant uh, uh, trend and tick readings, and that's all that uh, blue area. Yes. So that's where all those uh, panic showed up at. Sometimes you get a little bit below those those levels, but if if if, if the ten and uh, the trend and tick did not show any panic in those levels, or very little of it. Then I would say, now nah, we're probably going to go to back down to 420. But because over you know all, all in that price range, in that blue price range, there's all that panic in there. Right. So eventually, uh, I think this is going to be a sport area. Is what I'm thinking is going to happen. Is we're, we're probably you know probably bounce next week. That's my opinion. Yes. And uh, and we go up and we come back down again. And the only reason why I'm saying that. Because this thing needs more time and panic readings to get that trend to 1.2. Okay. So, um, but price wise, I think we're pretty much there. I get That's it. How I'm I get it. it. Because if you look at you know chart number six, there's a lot of panic in that region in between uh, 430. What, uh, what about 435 to give or take 445? Right. And if you go if you go back to uh, chart. Uh, five, just real quick. Yes, I got it. Okay, you know we, we had panic between uh, three sixty five to three ninety. You know, a couple times we busted below that level, but that's where all the panic occurred. That's where all the ten or that uh, trend and tick rings all occurred between three sixty five to three ninety. And I'm thinking this is a similar situation, and we're breaking a little bit below that level, but I, I don't think we got enough. Um, I guess power because panic's already present. We already got uh, panic. Can the market continue to panic and push lower? Maybe, but it'd be unusual. So I'm, I'm thinking we got enough in this region. I, you know, it's on the bigger time frames. I think you could buy here and be safe. But I think you'll see a bounce up, uh, then another trend. You know, another uh, decline, probably around close to low, this level, and the ten and trick, uh, the trend and tick. Will continue to be high, you know, over a ten-day period, and that gives that reading up one point two. If you get what I mean, we don't have enough days. I guess what I'm saying, yes, of panic reading uh, to get to, to get to one point two. So that's why I'm thinking there's a bounce, then another decline, then the next decline. We'll probably have in the same region. I would think. Uh, the trend will get up to 1.2, and that's when uh, the the bottom is. And that'll really drive people is, crazy because you, if you, if we if we end up getting a bounce out of here, people say, "Oh, I missed the bounce." Then they get in; it comes back down to test again, right? They get out right, again. That's what I'm thinking. Right? Exactly. No, I I, I get it. Yeah. I get it, man. <laughs> yeah. So it's 
you know, the, the 10 day is actually two weeks of trading. Yes, and it that's is. Two weeks of right. ugliness. Right. That's what it amounts to. Right. So, uh, you know, one week of ugliness is not enough. You need two. And if you can get through, you know, if you get to 21 day up there too, which is ideal, if you go back to chart number five. Yep. Uh, uh, yes. The okay. middle window is the 21 day. Okay. Uh, so that's the month. Uh, 21 days in a uh, that's days in a yeah. month. So that was a pretty solid base because the 21 day also got to 1.2 on that uh, base billing. Period. That's a lot of selling on 21 so, days. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of selling. So, and you know, and normally, you know, if you go back to Weiss Coffee, if, if you got a yes. year of base, normally you get a year of rally. Right. If you got one one uh, uh, base of a month of base billing, then you maybe get a rally of a month. So in a bigger time frame, so we broke out of this, this is, uh, you know, chart number five, we broke out of this trading range back in April, May type uh, range, and that base was 11 months old, so that implies we're going to, in general, rally all the way into probably uh, March, April of next year. That's what I'm thinking, if you do the wife stuff. up. And this sideways move we got going on right now that started in um what August? You know, it's kind of high in August. We've been going sideways now since you know we're almost getting into October. So a good solid, you know, two three months here. We're due for another rally to begin. Yeah, it's a great so point. I, I think that, this is just an ABC down. That's all it is. Yeah, I, I just to I, to I just put up that base building that consolidation that we had. That's quite that was quite a wide consolidation too. I mean, you know. Bottom line is that uh, talk about some price spread out there, but a long period of time, there's no doubt about it. So this is going to get yeah. really intriguing, you know, particularly, you know, you can see if we just go back to the gold market for a second, you know, they always, right. as Tim said earlier, folks, they always love to jam the gold market. And just when you think it's going to take off again, they jam it again. When I woke up this morning, I saw this down and I said, oh, my God, they're going to jam it again. And, you know, they didn't get to the swing point. The thing that's intriguing, we had the contract get to 1933. And, you know, there's some volume on it. Uh, but the swing, you know, the bottom line, it rejected the 1933. Well, the 1921 is the swing point. So it's like, okay, man, if you're going to jam it, you should at least be able to get down to the swing point. Because what it all it really did is that it came into the strength that we had last Tuesday, you know, and it rejected that right. level. So, you know. Yeah, if you look at GDX, too, I mean, if you look at that chart on chart three, you know, we had some big volume days up. We did. And one thing about big volume days up, they usually kill a rally on a short-term basis because, it's, it, you know, if you get too much volume all at once, it yep. kind of takes the energy out of the market right after exactly. it. Exactly. It usually gets some sort of a consolidation. It takes a huge so, amount of energy to go up or to go down like that, right? That's the bottom line. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, it's like selling climaxes, buying climaxes. Yes. You want the volume to increase, but you don't want to increase too much because it, it gets soji in consolidation. So that, oh. yeah, but we did break, uh, you know, on that GDX chart, we did break those previous highs on higher volume. So at some point, we're going to break some new highs. Yes. According to that, you know, Tim, it's charge. always a pleasure. Uh, I'm, and I will be here next Tuesday. So uh, stay tuned, folks. Tim and I will be back next Tuesday. Have a great one. Have a safe one, Tim. Thank you. Thank right. you.